A variety of sustainable pest management strategies are available for nurseries, and this video is intended to give an overview of integrated pest management, or IPM, as one of the basic concepts behind sustainable pest management. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, IPM is an effective and environmentally sensitive approach to pest management that relies on a combination of common sense practices. Here at Grandiflora, we quit using uh, restricted pesticides a long time ago when we almost killed ourselves with some methyl bromide. And since then, we've only been using pesticides and fungicides that have a warning or caution label. We don't spray just blasting everything in the nursery. What we'll do is we'll do scouting and look for problems. Specific plants have different problems at different times of the year. When it's raining, you're gonna have more fungus. When it's dry, you're gonna have more mites. And then our sprayers will come in and spray those plants, usually with the safest chemicals available, things that have very low re-entry times. And so we're talking about soaps, oils, neem extract, Stuff like that is what we tend to use. Oh yeah, we don't enjoy spraying and uh, we use as, as few pesticides as, as possible. We, if we have a question about a, a problem, uh, uh, we have some sim foliar symptoms, so we have a, a lab uh, nearby that we take our plants for analysis and find out if it is a pathogen, whether we need to apply fungicides uh, or maybe something nutritional that uh, we need to rectify in that way. Nobody likes pesticides. That's pretty obvious. We, uh, you know, you like to use them as li little as possible. Great advantage of using the strip system, capillary mats, less spraying. It allowed us to quickly get away from some of the harsher chemistries because the efficiency and efficacy of, of the new and modern chemicals is so obvious to us. And even more so is the uh, use of some of the organics, some of the oils, the garlics, the uh, clove extracts, all of these things work well in this environment. And you know, we have to rely on conventional pesticides, but in the rotation, these things are phenomenal. Uh, they're time savers, they're money savers, and you just feel good about the environment when you can use so many less pesticides and rarely use anything harsh at all. As far as herbicides for the woody plants, you have to use them. There's just no way to escape using them in a nursery this size. If we were small, maybe you could come and hand pick things and keep ahead of it. Now the perennials and annuals are a different challenge because most herbicides cannot be used successfully on a lot of the crops we grow. In cases like that, we've experimented with many different things. We've tried some discs that are made out of cocoa fiber, we found that works, what works quite well is actually mulches. If you can buy some pine bark nuggets that's a uniform size or even cypress mulch, that has worked good for us in the past. We even had a product once that was made of recycled newspaper. One of the easiest and least expensive components of IPM is the concept of sanitation. This is a general pest management control strategy based on the exclusion of pathogens, weeds, and or insects from susceptible hosts. Sanitation includes many components, such as pest exclusion, low impact chemical treatments for control, and use of environmental factors to reduce pest populations. You also have to control the weeds around the beds. We do that with uh, post-emergence spraying of uh, Roundup, and also we do mow our roads on a regular basis to keep things from going to seed. Another pest management strategy is using low hazard chemicals to sanitize areas or control pests, as is practiced at James Greenhouse in Crawford, Georgia. Here workers sanitize propagation areas between crops in order to prevent diseases from spreading from one crop to another. On a larger scale, Pathogens as well as weeds can be effectively controlled simply by composting substrates prior to their use in production. Temperature is of particular importance in the composting process. There's a 15-day period by which it has to be at a minimum of 131 degrees. 
and it gets turned a minimum of five times. After that, it stays in those rows for probably seven or eight weeks and then goes into a, what we call a static pile where it continues to age. And we usually uh, get about six months of age on it before we actually use it in our product. On a nursery-wide scale, the implementation of larger scale systems can significantly help manage pests. One of the most important systems in any production operation is irrigation, which can prevent or lead to significant pathogen problems. When we first started our business, we were strictly overhead with the spinner type irrigation that's common now. But the amount of water for that type of system and the porous soils you must use, the pumping cost, is still not as efficient as the drip tape or the capillary mat that we're exploring right now. You know, we just see that the, the disease pressure from wetting the plants with an inch of overhead irrigation every night is, is tremendous and we try to avoid that. In addition to the capillary mat treatment used at Riverview Flower Farms, two other forms of irrigation may significantly reduce foliar pest problems. These include ebb and flood irrigation, as shown at James Greenhouses, and low volume or drip irrigation, as seen at Southeast Growers and Monrovia. Some growers who utilize overhead watering may minimize pest problems by treating irrigation water prior to its application. This commonly includes treatment with chlorine or ozone. IPM, including sanitation and systems approaches to pest management, are just some of the strategies growers can use to sustainably manage pests. Many of these and other methods of controlling pests require little investment, input, or time to implement. These can range from simply scouting the nursery for pests through intensive infrastructure like irrigation or water treatment systems. For additional information, please refer to this document and others which are available on the project website.